Hello! And thanks for listening to us. Please follow us on any social media outlet that you use. Feel free to email us at hello at thenevergames.com, especially if you have a game that you would like for us to play. You sure as hell don't want to miss what we have in store in this wild and crazy episode. Tonight, Trevor helps his neighbor, Jerome, hang up his big mouth, Billy Bass. Tom's genie status is... It's complicated, and Noel manages to remove his blindfold. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 3, a very long haiku. This is the Never Games. Let's play. All right, we're going to jump right into it with Theme Between the Lines. If you haven't listened before, this is just a quick trivia game. I've got four questions lined up, and all of the questions revolve around one theme. It's like stretching. We're, we're just trying to limber up right now. <laughs> yeah. It'll go, go super snappy. It'll probably take three and a half hours because it's tough to get these two to answer questions. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... If you think you know what the hidden theme is that these questions revolve around, hit us up on social media at the underscore never underscore games. Let us know what your guess is. All right. You guys ready to start? Yeah. Let's go. All right. Question number one. Comedy Central has aired 22 roasts since the event was first televised on the channel in 1998. Of those 22, only one has been nominated for an Emmy. Whose roast is Emmy nominated? Is it A, Joan Rivers, B, William Shatner, or C, David Hasselhoff? You're so, you're, you're... Joan Rivers. My mind is exploding. I had no idea it started in 1998, first of all. Oh, yeah. I mean, it goes back farther than that, but that's when really? Comedy Central... Oh, yeah, it's it yeah, goes the way, roast way back. goes back into like the 40s. Yeah, oh, it was like the God. New York uh, Friars Club, I think. Yeah, was running it. Oh, like... that's ironic. Friars, Friars <laughs> doing a roast. Um, I am going to say William Shatner. All right, and Tom, you said Joan Rivers. Yeah, correct answer is William Shatner. Hey, hey. His 2006 roast got nominated for an Emmy. That's bonkers. Like, yeah. <laughs> must have been Those a, are all so bad. Must They're have been a slow good. year. Yeah. Yeah. They've done 22 of them. That's like. also nuts. <laughs> anyway, uh, question number two. The Keurig company has quickly become one of the best examples of unnecessary plastic waste. In 2015, how many single serving pods did the company sell? Is it A? 1,996, B, 3.9 million, C, 415 million, or D, 10.5 billion? A L- little bit of space between all those numbers. Quite what year? What year was this? I was, I was thinking 1 billion. I'm going to go 10. I'm going to go 10.5 billion. I'm going 10 billion. It is uh, 2015, No. <laughs> I don't know why, but A is very intoxicating to me right now. <laughs> 1,996? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, fuck it. We'll go A. You're going with A. I'm going with A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, correct answer is 10.5 billion. Oh, goes to Tom. So close. <laughs> well, you got to figure there's 100 million Americans who probably use them every day, drinking 365 cups of coffee a year. It adds up pretty fast. I was just uh, thinking, like, somehow maybe that was, like, their first year and, like, it was just them and their <laughs> that, them and their friends and, like, networking. It was only the Keurig offices that were using Keurig yeah. cups. Yeah. <laughs> just one guy <laughs> with a real serious addiction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, wait, I could sell this. Wait, what was it? 1,000 something? That's just like three a day. That's a hit for a year. <laughs> yeah. No, that's well, like... the thing is, they, that company was only open for the last two months of the year, so... Oh yeah, <laughs> it was only two. It was only two months. Oh. In 2015. All right. Question number three: The Bristol stool chart was developed in 1997 as a helpful way to describe your stool. How many different types of stool are described on the chart? And this is whoever guesses closest. Nine. Yo, that's too much. 
Maybe. I don't know. Any number higher than three is too many. 10.5 billion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems uh, like you think of three, Noel. I'm just trying to think of my personal history. It, no, you know what? I'm going to go higher. I'm going to say 15. 15. All right. Because then you got, you got like greasy solid. You got you We got don't semi. need to go into it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Correct answer, seven. Oh there are seven God. different steps on the Bristol stool chart. So that's a point to Tom. It's two to one in question number four, which we should stop having an even number of questions in this game. Anyway, last question. Hope Noel doesn't get it right. <laughs> Many people today start their day with caffeinated beverages. However, which country was the first to drink caffeine? Is it A, China, B, the Republic of Yemen, or C, Persia? Now, according to who, I don't mean to go all Connor sort of uh, centaur boobies on this, but like, <laughs> what's the source? Uh, Wikipedia. Uh, okay. Remember, there's a point in time where if you said Wikipedia, people would be like, that's not good enough. And now we're like, yeah, I trust that's it. It's kind of the number one source. It's where everybody gets yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what were the? Uh, sorry, what were the three options again? Uh, options Persia are China, the Republic of Yemen, or Persia. I'm going to say Persia. I want to say China. Green tea's got caffeine, right? It does, yeah. Yeah. All right, correct answer. China. Oh, no. Sorry, we Trevor. Have a tie. <laughs> and I was in the middle of making a backup question. Um, which of the following is not one of the top three exports of the country of Brazil? Is it A, iron ore, B, soybeans, or C, corn? Wow. I'm I wasn't say corn. I was not expecting any of those. Um, Noel was like, damn it, I know all of the exports of Peru, why do well, we have to bring up Brazil? None, none of those are on my, like, obvious quote-unquote flags for, like, yeah, that seems right. That's the number four thing that Brazil exports yeah, flags. Like, flags. <laughs> uh, Only yellow ones. Just like like golf flags. Oh dear you God! Know, I like have to the... pick something quick. Oh my God! You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> the little like triangle ones. Oh my God! Mm-hmm. That they don't even actually use at golf courses. Pennants. Yeah. Yellow pennants. Only like the uh... little fake ones that go on golf figurines. They're the. It's one of their number one. <laughs> the number oh dear God! Okay, okay. Sh- shut up! I'm gonna say uh, <laughs> hematite, iron ore. Iron ore. All right. Correct answer is corn that is not one of their top three exports and that gives the game to tom congratulations tom and anybody out there listening if you think you know the theme that those five questions all revolved around reach out to us on social media at the underscore never underscore games or send us an email hello at the never games.com or give us a phone call 406 games 24 let us know what your guess is I do want to point out a show first. Before this, uh, the theme between the lines this past game just started, we had a three-way tie going into this episode, which I don't think has happened, short of, like, you know, the season premieres and everything like that. Right, except for a tie of zero. uh, Right, yeah. It's also, uh, going into episode three, Noel, you were tied for first. Far and away the best you've ever done. But, 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 (laughs) I was also tied for second. And for third. <laughs> so true. Well, good. The, what we really should be talking about is Connor's doing terrible. It's just so bad. No oh, points man. yet this season. He's going to have to buy all of us a pizza. <laughs> Which you never did last season, Noel. Um, no, because I can't. I can't. Have, yeah. If if we I were to, that. Was... if I could give you pizzas without becoming homeless, I will. <laughs> and uh, welcome everybody to the Never Games. <laughs> My uh, name is Trevor. Podcast. I am the CEO of Stickerbox Studios and the producer here at the Never Games. My name is Tom O'Brien, and I was banking on that pizza. <laughs> Literally on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where all my money is. It's yes. on top of Noel's pizza. <laughs> and my name is Noel McGinnis, captain of the blue team. And as Trevor mentioned earlier, this is the Never Games, the number one podcast now in Technicolor. Hello, everybody. <laughs> 
It is aggressive. <laughs> it is bright. Uh, <laughs> so many. We have three colors all mixed together. It's it's glorious. <laughs> it's the start of a new age. What's going on, guys? Doing pretty good. Uh, I uh, had my car towed. Hey. Yesterday. Yeah, I don't purpose? have a car anymore. So so no. so so props. I uh, I had the roof uh, of my apartment was redone on Tuesday. Oh no, this is going to be a bad story, isn't it? Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's not good. But um, <laughs> my the roof of my apartment has been leaking for two years, three years, something like that. And Jesus. we've had roofers come a lot of times, and they fixed it. And like two months later, it'll drip again. <laughs> so finally, my That's... landlord was like, "No, fine, we're just putting a new roof on." Yeah, the new roof got put on on Tuesday. Great, but I couldn't park in my parking space because that's where they were throwing old shingles. Yeah, makes sense. So I parked on the street, and then they finished at like seven o'clock at night. I had already had dinner. I was like in for the night. I was like, "Fuck it, I can wait till tomorrow. I don't have to move it right now." Turns out Wednesday's street cleaning day. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> and I never park on my street because oh. I have a parking space. <laughs> <laughs> So we went to go have dinner with uh, Allison's mom, and I was like, where's our car? <laughs> <laughs> at 4.30, the place closed at 5, and I didn't know where it was yet. <laughs> I made it by the skin of my teeth. but So I got my car back. That's but, good. Uh, it was a stressful hour, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, when I first moved to um, Salem, Massachusetts... I got my car towed twice in about four months. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I did. I just I was I was too much of a rascal. I didn't know the rules of the road. Uh, <laughs> I was parking my car wherever I dang saw fit. Um, let's see. I parked my car once uh, in the middle of an intersection. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there yeah, was a Dunkin's no. on the corner. I wanted a coffee. <laughs> uh, I parked my car in front of a. Unbeknownst to me at a time, a driveway. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I, it was a skinny. It was a skinny alley where apparently there was a car hidden. So you can't park in front of an alley either, though. Hell, if I did, I would have gotten towed for it either way. Um, and then the other time, oh god, I can't remember. Why did I get towed? I think I might have parked in front of a hydrant. Oh man! I was I, I was I parked just in front ruffian. of the chief of police's front door. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he couldn't get out of his house <laughs> on uh, his lawn. Yeah, and then I just yeah, no. I just poops there and walk away. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was a really weird sort of a, I guess coming of age experience for me. But but I'm glad I, don't think I that's what it's considered. <laughs> I came of you're age. you're not a man until you've had your yeah. car towed twice. <laughs> yeah, but ever since then I've I've obeyed the rules of the road or at least parking uh it's been good <laughs> the rules of the park you guys you want to play a game yeah we should play a game all right the name of this game for all y'all is disney discard defined So, what? Produ- one more time on that. <laughs> the name of this game is Disney's Discards Defined. Are you s- trying to say Discord, but you're like a fifty-year-old grown adult? <laughs> no, discards. Discards. Things that they've discarded. Oh. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> God, we're stupid. <laughs> so this is a game that I've had in my back pocket for a long time that I couldn't play because Connor, because he knows <laughs> a lot about Disney, so. Uh, <laughs> Now, it's, so. this is my first game without Connor on the show, uh, so I'm busting it out. <laughs> the way this game works, I've got a four-sentence description of five different Disney direct-to-VHS movies. Oh, se- no. Sequels of classics. I've got a four-sentence description of each of them. However, one of the, dis- the sentences in this description is a lie. <laughs> and I want you to guess which one is the lie. Oh, I love it. Is one of these like Lion King three and a half? You sick son of a bitch. <laughs> no, they're all twos. Okay. <laughs> and they're all of very popular movies from the late 80s Dear through the God, 90s. I am 
okay. terrified. Oh, okay, boy. so first first movie I have here, I went ahead and put these in chronological order that the sequel was released. Not necessarily that the original was released, but when the sequel was, was released. Okay. Uh, so this first movie is Aladdin 2, The Return of Jafar. Yeah. The first Aladdin Ooh. came out in 1992 and grossed $504.1 million box yeah. office. Yeah. And the sequel, which came out in 1994, grossed $300 million, which makes it one of the most popular direct-to-VHS movies like in history, hmm. but has a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Still not bad. Right. That's not that horrible. Is the, the highest one on here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here's the description. I will even post it in the chat for you to read. And you guys tell me which of these sentences you feel like has a, is a lie. All right. The movie takes place one year after the first Aladdin movie. Although it's never explained how Jafar was turned back into a human after being turned into a genie, he returns to extract revenge. Using his magic, Jafar imprisons Aladdin and the Sultan and frames Aladdin for the Sultan's murder. Jafar is then defeated after falling into a pit of lava that he made while fighting Aladdin. Cool. One year is very short. That's, uh... That's, like, right after... Like, think of it... Robin Williams was trapped in that cave for millennia. 10,000 years or something like that. Yeah. So it, did he get, he got out after a year? That's insane. Yeah. yeah. So he also I should I believe that this movie was the setup to the Aladdin cartoon. Also don't that know was that like, one. So that yeah. it's uh you know part part of you know Jafar is not in the Aladdin cartoon, but his parrot Iago is a friend, and part of this movie is Iago switching sides as oh. well. So it was um it was a setup for a TV show. So when you say one sentence is wrong, is it the entire sentence or there's there's a few commas in here? Yeah, and you so, said Jarfar for one of them. <laughs> did, did I? Yeah, uh, that's his evil that twin brother. <laughs> Except wait, he's evil. It's it's his good twin brother. <laughs> the, the the misspelling of Jafar is not the uh, the error. So it's not Jarfar the Klingon. Okay. Right. I am looking for the whole sentence, although not every part of the sentence is necessarily a lie. Okay. But whatever is wrong encapsulates yeah, so You just have to give sentence. me one sentence. It's not sure. like, I want clause two of sentence three. Just You can just say <laughs> sentence three. Okay. So, movie takes so one, three, one year after the first movie. It's never explained how he's turned back into a human instead of a genie. He Jafar returns to extract his avenge, revenge, using magic. Jafar, Jafar imprisons Aladdin and the Sultan, frames Aladdin for the Sultan's murder. Jafar is defeated after falling into a pit of lava that he made while battling Aladdin. It's basically like, hey guys, imagine if the second half of the first Aladdin never took place and it just veered completely just, off the yeah. Right, this this is the what if. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is like, like, like a different timeline right now. Let's see, I'm going to go with the sentence, uh, using his magic, Jafar imprisons Aladdin and the Sultan and frames Aladdin for the Sultan's murder. Oh no, I was going to say that too. There's a lot going on in that one. It's a lot of places it could have been plugged my, in. My issue with that is, I don't remember who the Sultan was. Uh, Jasmine's, Jasmine's dad. dad. Oh, the short, the short guy with the big short white... Short guy with the yeah. white, big, everything big white hat the... and pants? Yeah. yeah. The guy in charge. The Sultan. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie in like 25 years. <laughs> you should rewatch it. It's pretty good. Is it hold, does it hold up? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. A lot of the like real big Disney movies do. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Trevor on that. I'm gonna say the same exact thing. Okay. Agreeing? All right. Yeah. The, it was actually, uh, although Jafar has never explained how he was turned back into a human instead of a genie, uh, because he is a genie for the entire movie. God damn it! I thought that that was right, and I saw him using magic in that other sentence. So he, well, that's that. the thing is that uh, he's a he is a magician in the first movie, but he wants greater magic, so he turns himself into a genie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh. So uh, he is a genie for the entirety <laughs> of the second movie. 
Uh, and it's his lamp that's dropped into lava, which kills him instantly, apparently. All right, second movie. This was the movie that started this whole game. Uh, Beauty and the Beast 2, The Enchanted Christmas. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this a Hallmark movie? All right, all right. I'm setting the all over right. under on Rotten Tomatoes at six. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to think of other Disney Hallmark Christmas crossovers. Oh, God. <laughs> ne- Nemo and the Spirit of the Ginger City. Like, <laughs> Frozen so, 1. For, uh, for background here, Beauty and the Beast came out in 1991 and grossed $440.1 million in oh box God. office. Huh. Beauty and the Beast 2 came out in 1997 it has a 13 on rotten tomatoes Ooh. and was available for a very short period of time being before being pulled from the shelves <laughs> uh it was re-released several years later but uh yeah the original release of it was only like available for like six months or something <laughs> do, do you know why it was pulled from the shelves because it sold so bad uh. but this is this is the movie that i i saw this movie a couple of months ago and i was like jesus christ <laughs> this plot is ridiculous wait why are you um, just like sitting around watching disney sequels so this one apparently was a favorite of Allison's and Willow's from uh, our guest from last season. Both had seen it and knew it was bad, but was like a fond memory. And okay. we were just like hanging out one night and we we're like, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> like, you want to watch a really, really bad Disney movie? Yeah, it's like, it's um, like Battleship for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here is the description of um, Beauty and the Beast 2 The Enchanted Christmas. <laughs> The entirety of The Enchanted Christmas takes place during the song Something There That Wasn't There Before from the first Beauty and the Beast movie. The plot revolves around an organ named Forte, voiced by Tim Curry, who wants to kill Belle despite the fact that he's bolted to a wall and can't move. He has been the Beast's primary singing partner for years and is loath to give up the position. Beast is swayed to Belle's side instead of Forte's after he finds and reads a picture book that Belle had made as a Christmas gift to the Beast as part of her attempt to teach him to read. (sighs) Okay, that's a lot. (laughs) So So, we got the entirety takes place during that one song, something there mm -hmm. that wasn't there before. Which is also, like, starting off, that's... The craziest thing. <laughs> this is a movie inside of another movie. Yeah. Also, if this if this was it. any other movie, the 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 sentence the plot involves an organ named Forte, voiced by Tim Curry, would be the a, another <laughs> whack whack sentence. Oh oh, sorry, no, I didn't finish that sentence. Who wants to kill Bell? Despite. Being bolted to a wall <laughs> and can't move. This is a yep. mystery science theater movie. <laughs> yeah. It really should be. I think if Disney wasn't so litigious, mystery science theater would have a field day with this movie. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, third sentence. He has been the Beast's primary singing partner for years and is loath to give up such power. There's no power in that. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe one of these are fake. They're all yeah. fake. He's the assistant to the regional manager. Yeah. Can't, can't give up that position. <laughs> and then the fourth sentence, the beast is swayed to Bell's side instead of Forte's after he finds and reads a picture book that Bell made as a Christmas present to help the beast read. So I mean, the, I the, guess. the beast is illiterate. This part of, is the part of the plot of this movie. She's like, I love to read. And he's like, I can't read. I own a million <laughs> books, but I can't read. And she's like, let's teach you. <laughs> that I could find being real, because that's just like that. Yeah, um, that makes sense. That that Twilight Zone episode all over again. But a picture book, though? I'm going to... Wait, wait, wait. A it's picture also book. a picture book about him. A picture yeah. book about him. <laughs> you don't need to read a picture book. Dude, even I Spy has words, man. Okay. <laughs> like I and Spy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, a red button and a blue balloon. Yes. Although I Spy has pictures Whoa. next to the uh 
to the sentence so that if you can't read it, you know what object you're looking for. No, they don't. I'll show you right now. <laughs> oh, Noel's got an I wow. spy within reach. Yeah. I got. I have three actually, but yeah, it's just. Oh yeah, it, they read them as like poems. Right? Yeah, it's like a, a short. I, I mean, like, I guess a long haiku, and then you kind of have to figure out what's going on. I don't think on. that those are haikus. If yeah. they are, I think haikus have a very specific length. It's a long haiku, guys. <laughs> That's God. the defining factor of haiku. Hey, let's <laughs> answer this question. It's like which very se- structured and. Hey, hey guys, which gonna... sentence is wrong from this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Here is the entire script to Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. Which of these lines have I made yeah. up? Fun fact, the entire script is just a haiku. <laughs> it's um, a very, very oh long God. Haiku. Okay, so I'm going to say the thing that's fake is uh, uh, the one I pointed out before. The plot involves an organ named Forte, voiced by Tim Curry, who wants to kill Belle, but he's bolted to a wall. Uh, oh I was looking God. at that one too, but I feel like I got to disagree with you on this one. Yeah, we can't, this can't um, be a scoreless game, man. <laughs> yeah, I, you said it first, so I'm, I'm going to go with the picture book sentence. I feel like okay. it's probably not a picture book. Uh, you're both wrong. Oh my God! The reason that he wants to kill Bell because he still wants to kill Bell is because as a human, he ha- was like uh, ignored in the castle. But the room that he has been turned into an organ in is adjacent to the Beast's bedroom and has become essentially the Beast's advisor. And he knows that if the Beast and Belle fall in love, they'll be turned back into humans and then he'll be a nobody again. Uh, So he's still uh. trying to kill with with the assistance of a flute. The other (laughs) thing about this movie is that it's almost entirely flashback with Mrs. Potts telling the story to Chip, the teacup, Despite the fact that he is a major character in the movie. So it's a clip show. He's like, what happened next, Mama? It's just like, you were there. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, it'd be like, if you're like, tell me a story, Tom. And I was like, okay, Trevor. Last Christmas, you went, (laughs) like. Even if Connor were here right now, God rest his soul, he's not dead. I. I don't think he'd have much of an easier time with this. I'd like to think because it helps I, me. I feel like he would be like, "No, I know the plot." Of this he, movie. No, That's he, not he would. The... I think he would say that actually. But I, I just like to think that we'd all be on, on like a, a level playing field. All right, number number three uh, is Pocahontas Two: Journey to the New World. Or to a new world. Oh, that uh, can't which be I good. Actually that's not. Was, a, that's not a good one. I was part of a focus group for this as a child. <laughs> what? My grandmother took me to the mall to be part of a focus group where I watched an early cut of this, and I was like, "This is bad. This is <laughs> this is bad." So they're like, "What would you change?" I was like, "All of it. This is just terrible." <laughs> All right. So the first Pocahontas came out in 1995, grossed 346.1 million dollars. Pocahontas two came out in 1998, three years later, and has a 29 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. All right. All right. I've liked worst movies. Yeah. Um, I've hated better. So this takes yeah. place two years after the first movie. Pocahontas and John Smith ha- are sailing back to England to live there together. But after arriving, John Smith is ambushed and accused of treason and seemingly killed in the ensuing fight. King James is on the verge of declaring war against Pocahontas's tribe and refuses to meet with her unless she can act more civilized. Oh, no. After a My Fair Lady-style attempt to turn Pocahontas into a proper English lady, which comes close to working, the king declares war with her tribe and throws Pocahontas in the Tower of London. John Smith then reappears and proves that the king's advisor has been manipulating him, and with Pocahontas' help, is able to stop a battalion of ships from sailing from England to wipe out her tribe. This might be the most recent, most racist movie Disney has ever done. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this, this sounds troublesome. Oh yeah, so the, they, they do the entire, like I said, they do the entire plot of My Fair Lady. It takes up Maybe a quarter of the movie. Um, <laughs> at, at least they can make it more efficient. That's really what you want to see uh, 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 from a other very, movies. very efficient My Fair Lady. <laughs> 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 that's the, that's what you really hope for for uh, uh, movies in 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 future years is just increased performance. 
<laughs> right. I, what I really want out of my movies is an t- episode of a TV show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pocahontas 4 had 600 horsepower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, check out that fucking torque. <laughs> yeah. I don't know you, about you, but I go to Car and Driver for my movie ratings. <laughs> Car Rotten fact. Tomatoes doesn't have the efficiency score. Car facts? You know, more like car flicks. All right, let's do this. Pocahontas 8 came with its own trailer hitch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with each ticket, you got a trailer hitch to attach to the oh, back of Pocahontas yeah, 4. It'll, to- it'll tow your boat. Totally. All right, we just we can't make more shitty jokes. On VHS. Yeah. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Except so we got, if there's a VHS with a fucking trailer hitch attached to it, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? We got, we got okay. Two I feel like I'm going movie. to hell the more and more times I read this plot. Yeah, I'm trying not to. This is this <laughs> really gunks up the works, y'all. Yeah. All right. So two years after the first movie. Pocahontas and John Smith sail back to England to live together. <laughs> After arriving, Smith is ambushed and accused of treason, seemingly killed in the assuming fight. Then we have King James is on the verge of declaring war with Pocahontas's tribe. Hey, the Bible guy. He sucks. Oh, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Actually, the Bible is just a recreation of Pocahontas too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you checked the horsepower on the yeah. Bible? <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, let's just go on to the next question. That thing's yeah. got a Hemi. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, okay, God. okay. Uh, second sentence. <laughs> Formula James One, on- Jesus. Sorry. All right. <laughs> King James is on the verge of declaring war with Pocahontas' tribe, refuses to meet with her unless she acts civilized. Oh, that's the worst fucking sentence I've ever read. <laughs> yeah. My, a My Fair Lady style attempt to turn Pocahontas into a proper English lady almost works, but the king declares war and throws Pocahontas in the Tower of London. Oh my god, that's the second worst sentence I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> and then John Smith reappears, proves that the king's advisor has been manipulating him and with pocahontas's help stops a battalion of ships from sailing to england so i see a loose thread here i'm seeing Uh one too pull at that thread it's john smith yeah what the he died and came back is it really jesus in a hemi (laughs) <laughs> well, no, they think they think he's dead, that his dead body was taken. But then he's like, Shh, no, I'm fine. I'm in a cloak. <laughs> okay. Uh, I could have been helping this whole I, time. Trevor, what was your loose thread? <laughs> so I'm seeing that they stop a battalion of ships from sailing to England. Oh, that's a typo on my part. Okay. To America. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, beyond that, that, seems, that seems like a completely reasonable yeah. sense. It is the first mention of an advisor. I feel like the advisor might be mentioned earlier if he actually exists. It's the first sentence. I don't really believe Pocahontas and John Smith sail back to England to live together. Yeah, isn't the whole first movie about them staying? It's Isn't about right? him getting to America for the first time. Yeah, and they like, and they, but they, then they like fall in love and they settle down a bit, right? I thought. Well, so. they're there to build a settlement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so they're not yeah. just passing through. <laughs> I'm going to say the last sentence. I'm just going to go okay. with. So Trevor is saying the last sentence four, and Noel saying sentence one. Yeah. Yes. The the sentence that is incorrect is sentence one. Ah, uh, oh, I don't know if I feel worse or better. So, but here's the <laughs> thing, Noel, is that you're not right about the right part. Uh, oh, okay. So John Oof. Smith goes back to England. Pocahontas stays behind. When John Smith gets there, he is blamed for the events of the first movie. Uh, jumped, right. accused of treason, and then word comes back to America that Pocahontas is like tribe is being accused of this and they have to send a diplomat to answer for okay All and right. then she shows up as the diplomat and the king's like no i'm not talking to you <laughs> then the my fair lady part happens a little bit better but not much 
But yeah. anywho, so, let's get these truck nuts on this Bible. <laughs> <laughs> God. All right, but that's our first point for this game. Noel is in the lead. Uh, as we move on to... <laughs> Uh, the last we move on. <laughs> Round number four. Oh, four. Little Mermaid 2 Return to the Sea. Seems like it's going to be the exact same plot as Pocahontas 2. <laughs> uh, uh, Ariel has decided that she's in love with John Smith and goes to England with him. Uh, so, as background, Little Mermaid came out in 1989 and grossed uh, $211.3 million. Little Mermaid 2 came out in 2000, has a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes, and as a fun fact, was rated number 27 on Total Film's 50 Worst Children Movies. Uh, wow. List. So, Tom, can you send me that list? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, that's All great. All right, so here is the plot of Little Mermaid 2. Twelve years after the events of The Little Mermaid, Ariel's daughter, Melody, doesn't know anything about her mother being a mermaid, and Ursula's sister, Morgana, a skinny octopus woman, has vowed revenge on Ariel and her father. She tricks Melody into joining her by telling her the truth about her family and turning Melody into a mermaid, uh, but that the only way that the mermaid transformation can become permanent is with the blood of the mermaid king, Triton, who she conveniently hasn't said is Melody's grandfather. After Melody succeeds, Morgana comes to immense power, and a battle ensues during which she reveals her true intentions and imprisons Melody underwater while the mermaid spell wears off, turning her back into a human and drowning. And after, however, after Morgana is defeated, Melody is reunited with her mother, and the two live on land again, but have no secrets between them. Wow. Okay. <laughs> These descriptions keep getting longer. <laughs> <laughs> so we got 12 years after The Little Mermaid, the daughter, Melody, doesn't know about being a mermaid. Ursula's sister, who is now skinny. A skinny octopus woman. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's an octopus woman who's really into skinny wine. Yeah. <laughs> she's like a brand ambassador to their underseas market. It's it's it is less cat. I mean <laughs> You're sw- you're is- you're constantly swimming. Why do you need less cal you probably need more calories. Right? They Yeah. You burn a lot of calories swimming. You do. Yeah. You do. Oh but drinking wine is hard underwater. So <laughs> I feel like <laughs> you should probably get your calories from something else. <laughs> is this wine salty guys? Hey, this wine tastes salty. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, the skinny stupid. octopus lady vows revenge. Then we have Trix Melody into joining her, telling her the truth about her family, and making her a mermaid. The only way to make that mermaid transformation permanent is with the blood of the mermaid king. Then we have, after Melody succeeds at the task, the skinny octopus lady has immense power, battle, and the true intentions are revealed. Melody is imprisoned. Then we have, after the defeat, Melody is returned with her mother, and the two live on land again, but keep no secrets. Jeez, this is a tough one. Go ahead and pull at some threads here. Things you don't understand. Yeah, Get me I'm talking. At, uh, the sentence, after Melody succeeds in her task, Mor- Morgana has immense power, and a battle ensues. The part of the sentence that I want to focus on, why... I I know they they teamed up or uh, Morgana tricked Melody in teaming up, but like that shouldn't directly correlate with the amount of power Morgana has. That's very weird. I'm guessing that like getting the Titan blood or not the Titan blood, the uh, Triton, Triton blood will was actually for her and had nothing to do with Melody. I feel like that's a plot yeah. point that's completely missed. The well, I was try the, the thing that was really it's... hard about this was like. Getting it so succinct, like yeah. to not be a one sentence description, but also like keeping it to specifically four. That's why yeah. there's a lot of front ons. Well, yeah. <laughs> considering the odds, I'm going to stick with that and hope I still win. So Noel's going sentence three. Uh, that's sentence three. There's no <laughs> way that's sentence three. 
Oh my god, it's not, yeah, I get uh, I'm gonna go after I'm melody go that sentence, yeah. Sentence number four. Something about the two of them live on land together again, keep no secrets. It's a little bit it's a little too wrapped up. Yeah, Melody's a real like, I feel like there's something Melody's off a real sense. rebel. She she likes to drink and take drugs and she never really tells her mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> Ariel, the mermaid's daughter, Melanie, drug abuser. Uh, <laughs> the Little Mermaid 3, recovery. <laughs> <laughs> so it was actually sentence 2, God specifically damn. in that Morgana doesn't want the blood of King Triton. She wants King Triton's oh, trident. No, don't say, oh, thank God you uh, said trident. <laughs> oh, <laughs> trident gun. She wants his dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's one left. Uh, Noel's still in the lead. One to zero. One to zero. But it's, a it's still one. a score. We could still tie, but let's hope not. The last one is Mulan 2. No subtitle. Mulan Rouge. Uh, so Mulan came out in 1998, grossed $304.3 Mulan 2 received a drum roll please zero on rotten tomatoes oh <laughs> yeah baby uh is oh, considered boy. terrible by everyone that's the obviously. spicy stuff especially because mulan one is all about like mulan being an independent woman and avoiding arranged marriages and stuff mulan 2 is about mulan getting married and multiple <laughs> arranged marriages dear so, god how how many three that's so many uh-huh. okay so the this movie takes place one month after the first mulan movie mulan and shang are engaged and are tasked by the emperor to escort his three daughters to their arranged marriages with the sons of an evil king and to assure their his alliance with the evil king and help stop the Mongols. As they travel, however, the daughters fall in love with Yao, Ling, and Chin Po, uh, the guys from the first movie, uh, who have come along to help. Uh, At the same time, while they travel, Mushu, the dragon, is trying to break up Mulan and Shang so that Mulan doesn't join his family, because Mushu is a guardian of Mulan's family, which would mean he would lose his job. Huh. Uh, it's all about job security. Uh, and then when they uh, when they arrive at, at the end of this long journey, Mulan has broken up with Shang after he let her fall into a river. Mulan disguises herself as one of the princesses and agrees to marry the prince so that the real princesses don't have to. But everything is ultimately saved when Mushu reveals that he's tricked them into breaking up and marries Mulan and Shang on the spot instead. Cool. Okay. There's, uh, I feel like every sentence of that one, I was like, oh, it's definitely bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the description of a zero on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's only a month after the first movie. Right. They're engaged. Escorting one month $3 after he found out that marriages. Mulan is a woman and yes. not a man, he's like, let's get married. It was a progressive time. <laughs> Again, next line in that sentence, three arranged marriages coming up. <laughs> well, yep. the, the progressive time stops right there. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting married to the sons of the evil king to make an alliance. Yep. Second sentence, as they travel, they fall in love with the people they're traveling traveling with from the first movie. At the same time, Mushu is trying to break them up to save his so own he job. Lose his job. Yep. Then, when they arrive, they have broken up. Mulan again takes on a disguise to go marry the prince to save the other princesses. But then, Mushu reveals his tricks. And Mulan and Shang get married instead. Yep. Okay. In the foreign country, away from their families. This is exhausting. This is... <laughs> oh, boy. Huh. <laughs> something, about, something about Mulan marrying the prince. Like, uh, I guess I could see that. With these movies, it's just like every single sentence. It's just like, no, that can't no, be that real. No, can't. 
that can't be right. <laughs> and you wonder why none of these were released in theaters. <laughs> All right, I am just gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna say it's the the sentence about them falling in love with the the three the three guys from the first movie. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, oh my god, these words are just jumbling together. I hate reading. <laughs> this is why this is why I'm a podcaster. I want to say the first sentence for some reason it's got me hung up. All right, uh, it is the third sentence or the fourth sentence. Oh, uh, I was going to that was my next one. Oh, it doesn't matter. I win. So, uh, in, in the process of the journey, Shang falls into a river and everybody thinks he's dead. And so Mulan's like, "Okay, my boyfriend's dead." And these people at least have people they can love. I'll marry them and st- like all three of the princes instead, or <laughs> one of the princes <laughs> instead. So that that's, these arranged marriages, and I hate arranged marriages, don't have to happen. And then Shang shows up, he's like, I am not dead. <laughs> Mushu's like, you're married. Done. <laughs> Wait, but what? what that happens? Can't, no, that's not the real. Other that can't be real. Go through with their arranged marriages then? or like... No, somehow the fact that Mulan <laughs> and Shang get married fulfills wow. the requirements of the arrangement, despite the fact that neither of them are from the other nation. Uh, now, I know watching the movie will make it less confusing. I don't think it's going to make it less confusing. <laughs> considering it's, it's a zero on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. That's real bad. That's real bad. Uh, and then the happy ending for Mushu also is that uh, when they get married, they join their like family ancestor pagodas so that Mushu can keep his job. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, this has been... <laughs> <laughs> Disney discards defined, uh, and Noel's our winner. I'm sweating through all of my clothing right now. That was that was rigorous. <laughs> well, you know what I think you guys have des- have earned is a break. Yeah, I could use a break. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by DB. DB is a Scandinavian brand that makes backpacks and bags to help people on the move stay ready for anything. From the streets to the peaks, DB's gear is travel tested by some of the world's best athletes, adventurers, and creators. It's a weird pause. Over the past decade, DB has designed and developed, released, and refined the best bags on the market. That's what DB stands for. The best. Best bags. The best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> With DB's patented hookup system, you are able to attach smaller products to your backpack, roller, or tote. And I think everybody knows that that's something you need going through airports. You, what are you going to do? Just leave all of it unattached? How are you going to eat you, your you just have, you Cinnabon just, if your hands are full of bags? You need yeah, them you have to. to each other. You have to attach your Cinnabon to your bag. Yeah, their patented <laughs> Cinnabon attachment. Yeah, and then, and then it's just loose frosting, and then it was like, you want to play Zelda on your Switch? Yeah. It's like, hey, you, where, where's the, where's that going to go? It's going to go. Frosting attachment system. It's going to go on your Cinnabons. bag. We're going to get sued by DB. <laughs> None no, of that is true, but what is true great. is that we are teaming up with DB exclusively to offer our listeners 10% off your next purchase by adding the code POD10, that's P-O-D-1-0, or going to the link in our show notes. DB, it's time to move on. Time to get going. DB, attach anything to your bag. <laughs> DB, the only Cinnabon attached bag system. <laughs> it's just a carabiner stuck into a Cinnabon. <laughs> TB, the official backpack of Katamari Damacy. <laughs> That's a game where everything attaches to each yeah, other. Yeah, no, it, it works. It's it, 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 it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, and this is a very special moment of the episode where we get to say who won 
from last year's theme, or last year's Jesus, from last week's theme between the lines, we got someone, and I can't believe we actually do have someone. Out of the dozens of incorrect answers, we were able to fish out one lucky winner. Congratulations to Courtney P. Uh, from sunny Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's There's still sun there. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Minnesota? I mean, there's sun in Minnesota. Yeah. I, I just watched all of Fargo, so, you know, I've been talking with a Minnesota accent for about 20 years or so. So if you want to be like Courtney or Trevor or <laughs> Sorry, anyone else. Sorry, the video else... that teaches you how to do a Minnesota accent uses a sentence where they go, Oh, oh geez. God. I haven't been to Minnesota in 20 years or so. Hey, so you guys, do you guys know the, the last week's theme between the lines? Ha. Huh. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was I, things that were hot. <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently Courtney and Trevor need, both need uh, from, from, from sunny Minnesota. So if you want to be like Courtney and you think you know the answer to this week's theme, theme between the lines, give us a shout on social media or uh, an email at hello at the nevergames.com or <laughs> just give us an old-fashioned phone call. The number is 4,064,236,724. Or, I mean, for the plebeians, 406 games <laughs> to four. <laughs> Congratulations, Courtney! You won yourself two tickets to NeverCon 2021. Yeah, man, Trevor, it's got, gonna got, be I've great. got good news about these tickets too. They're upgraded to VIP. Oh, that's right, Courtney! You got that VIP upgrade to NeverCon. That very important pepperoni. <laughs> and anybody who guesses right on any of the theme between the lines for the rest of the time before NeverCon, you also get VIP tickets. That's a full weekend pass yeah it's Yo, gonna be great it's, it's, it's got those it's got those paper fans that you like to shake up shake near your head it's got nacho cheese it's got everything yeah. you'll get to share a hotel room with keanu reeves yeah. he's not coming to nevercon but he's got a hotel room yeah. and, and he'll be nearby boca raton scotland yeah man same time. he's <laughs> not gonna be there he's busy <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we gave Keanu Reeves nine tickets to give away. If you see Keanu Reeves, go ask him for tickets to NeverCon. <laughs> yeah, he's got some <laughs> things to do. He's picking up some dry cleaning. In uh, Boca Raton. <laughs> Scholar. <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I fucking love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey guys, do you want to help me name my succulents? Yes. Yes. Oh. So, okay, here's the deal. I've got, I've got a bunch of them now. Uh, there, there was a, a minute there where anytime I went anywhere, I bought a succulent because you can buy them anywhere. But I've got these three in this pot right here, which I'm not okay, sure okay. exactly like what the rules are with planting them next to each other, but I just kind of did it. And we'll see what I happens. I mean, there are a lot of those like. Um, you know how it's like the the paint night sort of things, but it's there's like a plant night. And That's a they, thing. Oh yeah, I went with my mom a few times. It's great. Drinking plants. That's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> I mean she didn't drink much, but I I had fun. And you didn't do much planting between I the plant, two of you. Yeah, yeah I, I planted it out. To... I planted one. It's dead. <laughs> I need a uh, a name and a backstory for all of them, though. So, and here's so here's the backstory currently. There sure. was Wes and Amy. And they had a dog and a cat named Muffin and Spot. And Muffin and Spot are cactuses. They already have names. They already have a story. So they're, they're not here. But <laughs> They're not here right now. Yeah. They're uh, on vacation. Wes died. So now Amy is a widower. Wes may or may not be dead. I, I had to break off pretty much the entire plant. I'm going to see if it still grows. But now, now this is Amy. This like, this like stringy one right here. I don't know the names of any of them. And then I have these other two in the pot with Amy that need names and a backstory to go along with this. Okay, well, the, the one with the broad leaves is Jermaine. Okay. Uh, he lives next door. He, uh, a lot of people think he's got a thing for Amy, but he doesn't. He's just a supportive friend. Oh, um, he's, like the, he's close by now that Wes is gone. Dog sits when they were out of town. And uh, he's... Uh, you know, he he works a a cubicle job, but uh, regular nine to fiver, yeah, middle management he, or lower. 
Uh, he's hoping for middle management soon, but okay. Uh, and he, he plays with a, a group of other middle aged guys in a band in his garage on the weekend. Oh, cool! That's yeah. only modern blues. <laughs> <laughs> modern blues. All right. Which Jerome, is just basically the the same yeah. pattern, just one guy is just ripping a harmonica. God, I want to be friends with Jerome. He's a nice yeah. guy. He yeah, makes it, he makes great. good chili. He uh he he's developing his own <laughs> man cave that just says Tiggle Biddies on the wall. <laughs> what? Don't you do Jerome dirty like that? <laughs> Jerome would never. Okay, fine. It, it just has just has a big mouth Billy Bass. And, and that's <laughs> well, that I believe Jerome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's you know he's been busy. He's trying to get that uh, promotion at work. He hasn't had time to really build out the man cave. The yet. middle management promote. Oh, okay, the promotion right. to middle management. You know, he's been working at that company for fifteen years, Noel. He deserves that And he's that promotion. only lower management. I don't think he deserves anything, bud. It's a big company. You got to take your time, work your way up. <laughs> it's, it's Amazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was a picker there for like thirteen years. No, he was a plant in the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's great! I'd love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was a he was a plant. As a yeah. plant show. Come on. He worked for fifteen years as a plant in the Amazon rainforest, and now he, he's moved his way up to middle management at Amazon. And the other one who. <laughs> Who's the other one? Uh, we don't have a name yet. It's uh, this one right here. The stringy yeah. guy. Kind of tall. Yeah. Derek. 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 Okay. But he he's he's a plant for the FBI. <laughs> 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 oh Wait, my! What's he, what's he doing here? Who who's is he looking to Amy or Wes? <gasps> I mean. Wait. Does he think that Amy killed Wes? Unless. He's a plant for you, Trevor. What have you been doing? <laughs> he's, he's here Look, watching. Look, that's none of your business, and we're being recorded right now, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> he's he's just parked in front of Amy's house, but he's watching you. <laughs> all he's doing, he's just he's just all up into this photosynthesis. Come on. <laughs> just, just... Hey. Hey. What? what? Hey. Hey. You guys, yeah. want to play a game? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had nothing else to add to that. So. <laughs> so we've got Jerome and Derek. Jerome, great guy. Billy Bass on his garage door. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> oh, no, he's not great go, at interior design. It, it like, goes it, up whenever he has to leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's sad because there's, there's just some guy out there. Okay. Right. Uh. <laughs> Jerome's great though. I don't know. I don't know about this Derek character. He he seems fishy. Yeah, something. There's something he's not telling me. I don't quite know what it is. Yeah, you get to know him. Yeah, that takes time. It, it takes does. more time with some people. <laughs> we should play a game. All Let's right. Play. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. Play a game. All right. So now we are going to do ba da ba ba da ba. Great order. All right, so this is the no, it's not. <laughs> so this is. Are you ready to order? Uh, I don't even know how to describe this game anymore because it's so, it's so difficult. Difficult to describe. We had to make a <laughs> website hard. for it because we don't even yeah. know how. Trevor, can you just describe it real quick for us? <laughs> yeah, the game is. Uh... Scored like golf. Yeah, it's scored like like golf. You want the fewest number of points. One of us grabs a top five list, jumbles it all up, and then gives them out in a random order. When each one is given out, the people playing have to guess where on that top five list it falls. And it works like that for the first four rounds, but in the fifth round, there's one left that has not been said. It could be anywhere on the list, and we have to try and guess what that fifth item is. It is scored by when you pick when you pick a spot for an item, every spot that you are off by, you gain one point. And then in the last round, if you are able to guess the right fifth item on the list, God, this is confusing. It makes um, a lot of sense when you play it. It's like a yeah, board yeah. game. Describing Basically for it the does first you know four good. rounds, 
try and guess where these items fall in the top five list. Yes, so it's going to be great. Uh, my topic today is the five thirstiest... Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's the wrong podcast. The five states... <laughs> <laughs> The, the five states that have reported the most UFO sightings. Oh, boy. According to the New Fork, New, New, the New Fork, the National UFO Reporting Center, which has been around since its founding in 1974, that has documented around 90,000 UFO sightings across the 50, state, the 50 states. However... Almost 95% of those sightings being uh, military tests, weather balloons, or terrestrial activity, or whatever the government wants to tell us. So quick little uh, aside, I, yes. uh, I grabbed this book that looked kind of interesting out of a book swap. Uh, like two days ago and last night I was in need of a book and it was sitting there so I was like I'll just read this and it was like uh, I don't want to give out the name because the book is not great I started getting <laughs> like it just I picked it out of a random book swap somewhere it was unopened so whoever got it didn't read it either thank god but <laughs> it was just like it's it jumped off from the very start being like so aliens are real and we have proof because i met this guy doug who gave me these videos that this other guy and he it was like right away like this is real and the gray aliens are under the earth and they're helping the rich people to take control of the earth by giving them all of the technology and it was like 600 pages <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like I flip through to like random pages and it's just like yeah the great people they were they were giving away the technology and that's why Bill Gates is in a Yeah, that's one of the the weirder things I have with like the whole UFO things because it's all it's it's not creative which I don't know if it lessens yeah. or helps the the whole legitimacy of it but like there's like tall gray people, small green people, there's lizards and that's basically it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, all you got to do is name the order of the uh, the top five states with the top five UFO sightings. Oh, uh, you guys, okay. you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Number like one. one, Washington, and this is Washington State. Uh, I'm gonna say number four. Tom says four. I'm gonna put that number three. Three. All right. Enter guesses. All right, number two, New York. And this is New York State. State of New York. <laughs> going to just uh, keep saying that. Be a dick. I'm going to say two. I feel like the, the Western states are always more popular with it, but there's just simply more people in New York, which makes me think it would go higher. I'm going to put it at number four. Four for Trevor. So four for Trevor and two for Tom, yes? Yes. Okay, cool. Number next. <laughs> California way. California. I'm going to say one. Yeah. I'm going to put that number one. All right. One for both. Easy enough. Keeping it going to Texas. Oh. Yeah, right? I right? Didn't see Every, that everywhere, everyone forgets about Texas. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense now that I think not. about it. I'm going to say three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, gonna say, three for Tom. I'm going to say four. Four for Trevor. Okay. And last one. What, what did you think is the remaining state of the top five? New Mexico. Oh, New Mexico. God damn. Okay. I was thinking either that or Utah or Arizona. I'm going to say Arizona. Arizona. Congratulations. Both of you got that last one wrong. Damn it. Was it one of those desert states? Um, it's a state. <laughs> Vermont. <laughs> Is it? It's, it's, it's not. Oh, my God. It's not Vermont. Uh, so I'm just, just going to go over the, over the, uh, the list with y'all. Uh, top five is New York. Or, sorry, number five is New York. Okay. okay. Uh, with uh, a little under 4,000 sightings uh, since... Reported sightings. To this R reported sightings since the whole new frock um, uh, has become. So it's, it, it's not really per year. It's just since the entire thing has, mm -hmm. has been about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number four is Texas at a little under 4,000. 
Number three is Washington State uh, at around 4.5 thousand. Number two is Florida. Florida. Florida, which was the one. Of course, you guys. Come on. Just think about it. Uh. With a little under 6,000 sightings. So number two, uh, Florida, 6,000. Number one, California, with over 10,000. Thousand sightings. Yeah, yeah. Which There's makes just so sense. many more people in and California, so, and, people. and so much more area too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So and with it's that, over where all those big test flights are happening and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Everything from Roswell to um, Nevada. It's, yeah, Area it's, Fifty One. There's there's a lot of sky uh, to to I don't know ingest. Um, so <laughs> top scores were top scores. It's two of you. Uh, I definitely got this one. <laughs> Tom had a score. Uh, honestly, it might be a record uh, of five points. And Trevor, congratulations with a score of one. With one, oh, yeah. so close. Uh, yeah, I bumped New York up to four. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and and that has been my. Are you ready to order? Uh, I I hope you guys are satisfied. I yeah. I actually I enjoyed that. So, I thought of that. So I. I left work today without an idea at around four o'clock, and I took a nap. And in the middle of that nap, I had this idea. <laughs> Jumped awake, like alien sightings. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty great. Uh, do you still have that list up? Oh uh, yes. Where is like Arizona, Utah, uh, yeah. New Mexico? Uh, so one, two, three, they are, four, they gotta five. They got to be top ten. Uh, actually, number six is Pennsylvania. Ironically enough. Really? Yeah, and then number seven is Arizona. Yeah. And so number 17 is Massachusetts. And New Mexico is number 27. Huh. Uh, Lower so half. Huh. Yeah. 1,143 uh, recorded UFO sightings. Hmm. And then, All right. if anyone's curious, on last, so no, uh, number one was uh, California, I think at a, a little bit over uh, 10,000, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. uh, well, uh, last doesn't really count. It was, uh, it's District of Columbia. Oh, with eighty-seven, which has got to be any <laughs> sort of Air Force One, Marine One, sort of anything. Right. Yeah. I'm assuming. Well, the president's an alien. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, number fifty is I saw much him on TV. Uh, number fifty is much more reasonable with North Dakota at one hundred and ninety-two, <sighs> which I could totally see. Yeah, I, I that's, don't, that's literally everyone that's, in North yeah, Dakota. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting that's a state. So yeah, <laughs> the one guy that lives there, just every so two months. It, <laughs> interestingly <laughs> enough, also going to the end of episode three, we are tied again oh, <laughs> at three points each. Can we tie on keep the season, this, you guys? Keep this train going. It all depends if Connor comes in and does like a MCU sort of, you know, thing and ruins <laughs> yeah. it for all of us. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys want to do some fake ads? Yeah, let's do some fake ads. Yeah, let's go. Um, <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by KnollsHaikus.com. <laughs> KnollsHaikus.com takes haikus from anybody who wants to enter them in. Anything you've ever entered into anything, entered into KnollsHaikus.com. There are no <laughs> rules. <laughs> and for, the, episode, for those of you interested in that but are still going to the NeverCon, or NeverCon 2021, there are going to be Knowles haiku, haiku booths. So you just yeah. enter it in and it will just be posted. You want to do it in person, right? Somewhere, than through the yes. anonymity of the internet. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we provide to, uh, the post notes and the whiteboard <laughs> for you to post them onto. So, <laughs> uh, today's episode is also brought to you by Jerome and the Cacti. Uh, come see them play <laughs> this Thursday at the High Noon Bar. Uh, they're going to be doing a medley of David Bowie songs. Uh, and we really hope you like it. Uh, that's Jerome and the Cacti. I thought they Jerome, don't have a website. Jerome only uh, played modern blues. I thought. Yeah, they're, they're doing, it's a special. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. That does it for another great episode of the Never Games. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, give us a like, a follow, and a subscribe, and a rating, all that stuff. It truly makes a big difference for us. 
And if you really love what we do here, uh, you can hit us up on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash thenevergames. For as little as $1, we'll give you a shout-out on air when you uh, join and become a patron. At $3, you get access to all of our bonus content, extra games, more D&D, all sorts of cool stuff. And it really helps us... uh, as Noel says, keep the single swinging light bulb uh, lit in this shack that we call a recording studio. We're so desperate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And please reach out to us. We would love to hear from you, whether it's social media, email, or like I said, the old fashioned phone. So yeah, uh, our, all of our social media are the underscore never underscore games. Email us at hello at the never games.com or give us a cell phone telephone call at 406 games two four. That is 406 426 3724. We would love to hear from you. Tell us how we can make the show better or worse. I mean, we're we're not going to do what you say about worse, but like, just we are curious about your ideas. <laughs> I mean, besides, I the, really want to hear that. I want to hear, <laughs> I want to hear so many ideas of ways people think we could make this show worse. I mean, besides the obvious, you know, just be creative about it. Um, we also have a website at thenevergames.com. You can find anything you can ever want there. Uh, bios about all of us, the hosts all of the episodes in a backlog that's just completely free for you to uh, ingest at your own leisure, and all the music that's done by a band called Good Damn It. That was... that was recently reviewed by the Hard the Hard Times podcast. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do I do the drums and the guitar and the bass and everything like that. No, that's not true. I, I just do the drums. <laughs> Trevor does everything else, and it's great. <laughs> it is better than Frosted Flakes. i didn't even mean to 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 make that but yeah sure yeah uh thank you for listening to uh to this wonderful never games experience we apologize for anything that's too colorful we just got the technicolor uh abilities so (laughs) so we we are dialing it in but hey man it's better than that shitty ass black and white Uh, it it, yeah uh my name has been (laughs) stupid my name has been and will always that wasn't long enough can you make that like another four minutes long yeah (laughs) tell us more about the technicolor yeah it's got it's got it's got red it's got green it's got blue and they mix them all together and it's crazy man it's like dreams in real life <laughs> Why did you make me? <laughs> <laughs> My name has been and will always be Noel McGinnis. My name is Trevor Kelly, at least for now. My name is Tom O'Brien, as far as you know. And this has been the Never Games. Do we play games in color? Almost. Starting now. Ever. All right. This has been a Studios production. <laughs>It was only the Keurig offices that were using Keurig cups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>don't think that's what it's considered i came of age (laughs) you're not a man until you've had your car towed twice (laughs) yeah he's like what happened next mama it's just like you were there (laughs) (laughs) pocahontas 8 came with its own trailer hitch Actually, the Bible is just a recreation of Pocahontas 2. Um, <laughs> have you checked the horsepower on the yeah. Bible? <laughs> no, he was a plant in the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> <laughs>